Hey family, this is your sister Truth Seeker 5000, BKA Dawn B. Getting on here for my first segment of Truth Be Told. Okay, which is just um, a segment that I made up for my channel where we can discuss certain topics uh, that come from the book of my mind or some things that are trending that you guys would like to talk about or that I'm just seeing on my uh, Facebook page scrolling getting on my nerves so let's talk about it but there was a few things here that I like to discuss so like to hear it here it go let's go uh, the first one is um, I read on Facebook uh, ludicrous Ty Bridges he actually got full custody of his um, uh, a daughter that he had with a uh, woman he wasn't in a relationship with uh, uh, a woman he was just intimate with a time maybe a two and a baby incurred from that named Kai C-A-I beautiful name beautiful little girl too um, she's 13 months old uh, and he had been back and forth from court. The baby mama was getting, I think, like $7,000 a month in child support. And she <laughs> actually asked for an increase, I read. So I guess uh, he ludicrous said, that's ludicrous, you know. And so he decided to uh, go after full custody so he wouldn't have to pay that child support, I believe. Because he just got engaged and married on the same day and everything and I remember looking at uh, something saying that they believed he just did that so that it would look better in the courts uh, when he went back to challenge that child support or to get custody for his daughter uh, which I believe that too so um, come to find out he won today and he uh, he has full custody and my thoughts about that is I think it's wrong. I think it should have been joint custody. Um, that's just from the book of my opinion because, you know, a mom and, and their child is like, I couldn't imagine being having my baby that I carried around for nine months that I loved and, you know, uh, been taken care of for, you know, this year and one month and all of a sudden you could just take that away from me. You know, she got visitation rights, but it's not the same you know and I just my heart right now as a mother goes out to her um, I do believe Ludacris did it for like I said so he wouldn't have to pay that seven thousand dollar a month child support but I feel he still did damage you know uh, to the future relationship between the mother and the daughter of course we know he could take care of her uh, financially a little better but uh, children need their moms you know I, I just really I'm kind of torn a little bit because if she was just using the baby like so many women do just to uh, squeeze money from him then I can see what he did as being something that I would you know try to do as well because think about it he just got married you know just got engaged just got married uh, starting a new life with a new woman he's already got a 13 year old daughter out there by another woman and um, you know you know he's doing these movies and everything his career of course he's not wanting to have to take care of a baby but like I like we said if he, instead of paying seven thousand if I could just get full custody then uh, hey give me the baby <laughs> he said so that's what he did so it is what it is you know I just wish um, for the mom that uh, this doesn't cause any type of breakdown or anything to her mentally, emotionally. Um, and I hope at some point that they could get um, joint custody. You know, I think that's fair. Uh, he probably doesn't even want to have anything to like do with her at all at this point. But I don't know because I wasn't there. Like what evidence they had. The judge had to see him as being the more fit parent other than his money but um yeah that's my take on that you know you can give your opinion but i just feel it should have been joint custody uh wondering if it's still joint custody if he still have to pay child support you know sometimes that's kind of fuzzy and everything i think what did her in is the fact that she went back and tried to ask for some more money on some greed <laughs> you know but um so yeah you know we is always three sides to a story so that's my take on that. Um, moving on to uh, uh, 
I watched this documentary called uh, Light Skin Girls and Dark Skin Girls. Okay. So, my take on, I saw the Dark Skin uh, documentary first. And I could totally relate um, being dark skin myself to everything that they were saying. I didn't have any issues uh, with what was said. I can relate as far as like having heard about it you know the stereotypes and uh, the negativity uh, towards uh, darker skinned uh, people men and women uh, uh, I, I watched the light skin uh, version and it was totally different uh, I'm gonna get back to the dark skin later um, but the light skin it kind of really touched my heart like bothered me because there was more of violence uh, on some of these light skinned people uh, pertaining to their testimonies I didn't know because I never noticed growing up any hardship that they any of them have ever had uh, I've been to a lot of schools uh, interacted with a lot of kids and I've never seen that type of behavior done I think I've maybe only heard of it heard tales you know duck tales of it all uh, growing up, but I never saw it. You know, it, there was always cliques in school. Either you were part of the cool kids, you know, uh, there were some light skinned kids, of course, leading the pack. And, you know, I just, I, either you were cool or you were not. <laughs> you were a nerd, you were, you know, whatever else. Uh, misfit. Uh, it, it, it just, I didn't see color really as being uh, light, light skinned that you would get picked on or hit or beat up I never saw that and I asked my husband who's light skinned as well my daughter light skinned and I asked them you know do you guys see any issues or you know being light skinned and they were just like no you know my daughter said she saw or felt a little discrimination in school when she was younger uh, but she never told me about it until after I watched a documentary and I asked her <laughs> you know uh, she said it was a little bit not sure she really understand I really try not to uh, I try to keep her away from uh, those type of movies and slavery movies and the help and uh, you know all these movies they have coming out that uh, put black people down you know in down positions graded positions you know it's 2015 and they still making all of these remakes of these slavery movies and uh, racist movies and stuff I think it's to keep us pitted against each other you know I really I don't support it I didn't go see Selma you know I feel like it's enough Martin Luther King movies we get it okay uh, it's enough Roots movies and help movies I understand <laughs> you know but when when you know they cast white people for movies they are playing gods and kings and you know in in the black position they put a, a white person up there you know they don't make them slaves in movies or anything like that you know and I just I don't support that those type of movies you know can't you be creative and come up with something else why do we have to keep reopening and and this same uh, wound, racist wound. You know, you don't see the Jews making remakes of movies about the Hitler and the Holocaust and, you know, the degradation of what all they went through. Just keep making remakes. For what? I think it's to, you know, keep us down in our minds. I think you can have a mental prison of low self esteem and, and how you look at yourself. It could it turn into a, a self made prison. You know, whether you putting it yourself in there or someone else through their opinion is putting it upon you. And that's what I think of these kind of movies that they just keep on, keep on remaking, keep on putting out. I don't support none of it. Uh, but as far as the light skinned girls getting back on that and closing out on that, uh, I never saw any mistreatment of any light skinned women, anything above any other kind of bullying. You know, did we have bullies in school growing up? Of course. You know, they bullied everybody. <laughs> you know, I didn't see a difference. Did we snap on each other, you know, about each other's skin colors and hair? Of course kids did, you know. So, I never saw uh, the extreme of, like, what the documentary was putting out. Um, back to the dark side. Um, <laughs> the dark side. Like, tales from the dark side. Yes. Um... I love, love, love 
darker complected people. Let, let, can, can I say this? Uh, what I found very interesting uh, was in, in the light skinned one documentary was that there were dark skinned women like claiming light skinned. I was confused by like three of them. I'm like, you guys are dark skinned, <laughs> you know, darker complected than the light skinned. How, you know, what do you mean you were going through all of this because you were light skinned? I mean, they look like my color you know i was confused um on a couple of them but uh and i find it real silly how like brown skinned people try to distance themselves from us dark skinned darker complected people like oh well i didn't experience that because i'm not light skinned i'm not dark skinned i'm just like caramel uh, honey you stand next to a light skinned person you're the darker if somebody came in waving a gun like i'm killing everything with color you're gonna get popped <laughs> so stop it stop trying to act like you want to be so far uh away from my color you know away from the darkies you dark complected too <laughs> stop it stand next to a light skinned person you're darker complected so stop thinking like you halfway team light skinned because you're not <laughs> you're dark complected too and you need to be proud of it i mean i love I, I just think also it boils down to preference you know like how they the saying goes beauty is in the eye of the beholder i think that um everybody has a preference you know you can't get mad at somebody if you say ask a man well, what color woman you know kind of woman you like oh I like me a red bone you know with long hair what have you or you ask another man uh, you know what what kind of woman you like oh I love a, a dark skin you know thick woman with some you know locks in her hair I mean it's just preference I think what it boils down to it's just preference everybody have a preference um, me, if you ask me, True Seeker, you know, what's your preference? Um, I find dark skinned people, I mean, dark, very attractive. Um, the complexion, beautiful, gorgeous, men and women. I've seen some dark, 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 dark men and women that was just gorgeous. Okay, I'm talking about Nubian gorgeous. All right, I see clips of Africa, and I see so many different colors of of black and shades of you know black, and it's just gorgeous to me. You know, people of color, all colors, I just think are gorgeous, and that's just my preference. You know, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> my husband. I don't know how I ended up with a light skinned man. Where I get that light skinned man that time of season? Okay, I got him from high school. <laughs> we knew each other since high school. We didn't date in high school, but we knew each other from way back then. That's how he got me, or else I would be with a, a super um, Idris Elba, uh, athletic built, dreadlock having black man <laughs> my baby would be so black I, I just would put Vaseline on their little legs little fat legs and have them shine honey I just whoo love black people so all I can say you know is don't let anybody try to down your your worth you know or determine your worth they're, they're gonna miss the mark every time you know no one knows your worth but you you know so just let your light shine don't worry about would nobody get to say about your color, how light, how dark? People are ignorant. I think it comes from a place of ignorance too. <laughs> you know, preference slash ignorance <laughs> for some and others. So don't worry about that. You know, uh, the documentaries, they were, uh, they were, the light skinned one, I was just kind of like, because mm, there was one girl on it. I was like, oh, they cut me right here because I'm light skinned. And I, they think I thought I was all that. I'm kind of like, in my spirit, it was something about that particular girl. I'm like, mm, I don't think so. But anyway, uh, the dark skinned one was, was good. The light skinned one was disturbing. You know, I don't know if they played it up. Because like I said, I asked my husband, who's light skinned, had he seen any of that? And he's like, I, they lying. I ain't seen none of that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> happening. And somebody calling me. Y'all hold on a second. Hello? Hey. I'm in the middle of a YouTube video that you're on right now. 
can I, can I, can I close out? I'm about to close out and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a call back. Okay, Kev? Okay, bye. So, anyway, um, definitely, definitely, uh, it opens eyes. You know, that's the only documentary that I may let my daughter watch, you know, uh, that has any negative undertone about color in it. But that's it. All of that for color girls and movie and all of this other stuff that they put in the media and cinema. No way. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, lastly, I want to talk about, uh, oh, put your comments below, you know, if you disagree or if you want to make a comment on that, uh, what you thought about the documentary of the light and dark skin girls. But uh, next, I want to talk about, real quick, uh, y'all in these Facebook statuses and selfies and slash selfishness. <laughs> I, I made that word up. I want a quarter every time somebody use it. Okay. Selfishness pics. Okay. And just putting your whole life on Facebook. I don't know. I don't understand. Like, is it some type of breakdown that some people is having in this in this season? I don't know what it is, but people is putting a whole life, like, on Twitter. Well, I don't have a Twitter account, but uh, Facebook, and like everything that they go through is is on there. Then they get mad if you comment and say something. It's like keep your business, especially your relationship business, off. Of social media please and thank you um it's like is it you being vain is it for selfishness is it that you having a breakdown i mean talk to somebody honey because it doesn't make sense for you to put all your business out there i mean i just think that people because of all these reality shows this is just my take on part of it i mean it don't have to be the whole but I just think that because of these reality shows, so-called reality shows, which is all fake, it ain't rea real reality, um, that they, people kind of making their own reality show on social media. <laughs> Slick doing it, though. You know, uh, <laughs> this is not keeping up with the you dashian You is not a you dashian <laughs> okay? But I guess they say, hey, this is my page. This is, I say what I want to say, do what I want to do. With that being said, honey, okay do you but i'm just saying don't get mad when folks start you know giving you the real you know because truth be told uh you shouldn't have put it out there <laughs> okay so uh that's it uh thanks for listening to this segment of truth be told uh like comment subscribe make sure you interact anything you want to talk about want me to uh do for the next segment put it down there honey or mail me we're getting ready to get into some real real stuff because I'm getting ready to dig in my emails that I get from y'all and <laughs> it's some craziness in there so that we gonna be talking about in the future so in situations <laughs> goodness you guys so uh, I'll leave out names so but if it's a situation or a question you want me to ask uh, my subscribers you know get a poll going whatever just send me an email okay in my YouTube inbox all right if you know me on Facebook then Send me something on Facebook. But um, other than that, you guys have been wonderful. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Your sister, True Seeker 5000, BKA Dawn B, out.